The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. Well, welcome to this, which is session four. And it kind of is a follow-up of a frequently asked question, which is similar to the last question, which basically uh, still is um, wants to, to rely on this is the way that I am. This is the way that I was made. I've always been attracted to the same sex. And I understand that. But I also want to point out that there's been many scientific studies um, and I've read uh, around a lot of them. I haven't gone into the great depth of them, but I have read a lot of literature concerning this. And the fact of the matter is, um, there is no scientific evidence which is supporting a gay gene or that this is the way that you were made. Um, I'm not saying that you weren't, but I'm saying there's no scientific basis that supports or confirms that. Um, I also acknowledge that that, you know, and, and I know I've, I've worked very closely with a number of men and women who struggle with same sex attraction. And that's all they ever remember. And I acknowledge that's all you may ever remember. But I know that sexual programming, you know, our sexual desires and the things that we like and don't like is very deeply embedded. And, um, and so we have to we have to understand the, how deeply it's ingrained in us. So it may be all that you remember, but I know that as you do too, your earliest memories, there's, if anybody tells you that they remember their likes or desires before the age of two, you know, it's probably not lining up with reality. I know my earliest memories are very foggy, might be three, maybe four. So, Here's some of the studies that have gone on, and there's been attempts to try to identify the nature of the homosexual desire or same-sex attraction. There's been studies based on fingertip ridges, on finger lengths, on birth order, on genes, actually genetic studies, eye blinking, uh, hearing sensitivity, um, also homosexual and heterosexual responses to pheromones. Pheromones are the chemical um, uh, odors that we put off, the things that we don't even smell, but they're very deep. There's also been lesbian uh, uh, studies based on lesbian responses to pheromones. There's been brain scans of homosexual and heterosexuals. And all of these have come down to, we don't know, we don't understand. The, uh, so what would be the proper biblical response to this? Well, I believe that a homosexual orientation like a number of other tendencies that we all have in our life, are influenced by many factors. Those factors can involve uh, the way that we are parented. You know, faulty parenting absolutely affects all of us. Sinful choices that we've made or choices that others may have made. There may be gen uh, generational factors that are involved. There can also be trauma, hurts, and abuses. I've counseled a number of individuals who have uh, been involved in same-sex attraction, still having that, and they relate um, women who have been abused at the hands of men, rape, um, young boys who have been uh, submitted to uh, uh, acts of pedophilia and different things like this. So these are all factors that can influence. I'm not saying that any one of them causes. I'm saying they're all contributing factors. There also can be inborn characteristics. As I mentioned in the previous session, the nature of the consequences of the fall of mankind. And that absolutely has affected us physically, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally. So there's, there's those factors too. I mentioned the generational factors, the sins of ancestors and how these can have spiritual consequences, which leads me to the last one, which are spiritual influences. I believe all of these are part of the entire picture of what we're looking at when we begin to talk about homosexual behavior, but probably also um, what, what we mentioned in one of the earlier sessions, 
other illicit sexual behavior. This is not just a homosexual issue. Sexual immorality or illicit sexual behavior is a result of all of these kinds of things and all of these factors play into it. So this is not just a homosexual question. The question is, why are we not living up to the standard that God has set? Why are we not measuring up to the intentions of the Creator, which have been very clearly outlined? Psalm 51.5 says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. There's something going on related to the fallen nature of all mankind that has affected all of us. And that's what the psalmist is, is acknowledging here. Based on the scriptures, we've inherited that sin nature. We also have that flesh nature, which has desires and drives. And those in combination have affected us deeply, physically and spiritually. You can't assume that just because something is what we might want to call inborn does not normalize it. There have been studies which have demonstrated that there are inborn tendencies towards alcoholism. Does that mean that if a person has an inborn tendency towards alcoholism, that then we're going to say it's okay to be alcoholic? I don't think so. I don't think that's the, the proper response here. You know, also there's been studies which have connected infidelity. Um, as I mentioned, alcoholism, also violent behavior, other addictive behaviors. So we're not going to, to, I don't think it's fair for us to be able to say, well, if something is, if we prove that it's inborn, that then, that therefore it legitimizes it. No, the standard is set by God. That's the Christian perspective. The, God says the standard, here's his intentions. This is what he laid out. We can't deny that. That's where he sets the bar. We need to rise up to it. There, I think the best way to approach this is what we call the interactive theory. And that's what I've been describing. It's, it's, that, it's that we resist trying to pin um, a cause on any one single factor. In fact, the, the interactive theory states, we resist holding to any one theory on the development of homosexuality as being always true in all cases. What I'm saying is we have found that there's a number of factors, but those factors aren't present in every person. So it's a combination of many factors and that none of those factors are true in all cases. That's the best way to approach this entire topic, I believe. Um, I'd like to read a quote concerning the interactive approach. If we have an interactive theory on its causation, then our approach has to be interactive too. Here's the quotation. Homosexuality is probably caused by a constellation of factors, some known and some unknown, including physical, emotional, and spiritual ones. It simply may be that a person is not born a homosexual, although we acknowledge that that possibility still remains. They may be, but it is perhaps born, they're born with a set of traits maybe even that make him or her more susceptible to homosexuality later in life, given certain developmental variabilities. In other words, it may be that people just have some traits that if other things happen to them, abuse and other things, that then they go in that direction. And that I believe is the most honest approach to this. We don't, we don't know exactly what causes it, but we do know the fallen nature of man. Ultimately, we have to admit that we don't understand its origins. We do not understand the origins of same-sex attraction, other than the fact that it was not, it does not line up with God's stated intentions concerning his creation. Remember too, inborn does not mean normal. Bottom line, biology, what I'm inborn with, does not determine morality. God determines morality, God sets the standard, and it's our job to live up to that standard.